Hello, hello guys. Once again, Mr. ATC, back to you for another idea of housing. And today we're going to be talking about a pretty nice desk you've been seeing in the preview video. And you can see just behind me, just right here. So the goal with this project was to show you all I'm creating a pretty unique desk. Something you don't see all the time. And my daughter wanted something very shiny, you know, a little girl. Something that could give her a lot of storage and could be converted into a desk. As you can see it here, when you open the upper door on this desk, it's supported by the two doors on the downside. So as you can imagine, a lot of precise cut to do and a lot of things to really follow up precisely because if you miss the cut, you will have to start again. But I will be providing a lot of information for you below in the video description as usual. So let me know if you need more information. You can always reach out to me via the comment below. As you may have seen in the preview, to attach a very heavy design like this one, you need to make sure that you have a very strong wall. And before screwing into the wall, you need to double check if you don't have any pipes, any cable going behind it. And this is why here I'm going to introduce again our sponsor for this video, Wallabo DIY, and I'm going to be giving you more information about them at the end of the video. All right, let's go. And to make this design, you will need four pieces of plywood measuring 60 cm large and 120 long. First, I've showed you the one with 2 cm in thickness and now the one with 1 cm in thickness. Then, three plank to create your hexagon. The first thing I will do here is cut the planks in order to flatter them as much as possible. Then, in order to remove all the imperfections on each side, I will be here using my planner. And remember that the thickness here shouldn't be too small, so try to keep it between 2.5 or 3 cm at least. In order to find a good pattern, I'm gonna be using here a cable that you can see here laying on the ground to create a perfect hexagon. Then time to create the lines on each board to have them at 50 cm. Perfect, all good now. Next, I'm gonna move to my meter saw, set the angle at 30 degree, then cut each of the plank using my precision laser light. And now that I have them all cut at 30 degree, I'm gonna be tracing some lines on the back of each of them to create a small gap in order to insert at the end when I will be assembling the hole. And I'm going to of course repeat the same thing on each board. And making sure I have the same measurements on each of them. Here I'm gonna be using my straight cutting bit on each side to remove them all. Alright, now the fun part. Time to convert the workbench into a router table. I know that some of you really like this design, so it's always a pleasure for me to show you the different things you can turn it into. Then using the router to remove each side. Then here we are, fitting in the gap perfectly. So now we're gonna move to some tricky part, assembling the hexagon. And 
And here I'm gonna be using my nail gun just to make sure that everything stays in place. And this during the assembling time. Then adding the middle plank, which is very important for this design, because the table gonna be attached to it. And remember that we remove part of the other planks in order to insert the plywood on the back. So here, we will need to do the same thing also for the middle plank. I first use my router to remove part of it and for the leftover, I'm just using here my chisel. Now placing each planks on the back and note that I'm placing them here on the back in order to trace each line to make the cuts. And remember that when you trace the lines, you will need to remove a little bit of them, each of them actually, according to the gap that you've created to insert them. And to make that cut, I'm gonna be using here my precision plunge saw. And here we are, the first piece is perfectly matching. When the second one has been cut, I will be again attaching them using my nail gun. As you can see, it's well leveled. It wasn't really the plan at the beginning, but when looking at the design, I've decided to create some storage compartments using some wood leftover. Then here we are, looking not too bad actually. To fix them all, I've decided to use some screws, but before doing so, I will be leveling up each of the planks. Then now using 10 cm long screws, I will be attaching and screwing on the outside. And to make this design very unique, I've decided to create three doors in the front side. Filling up each holes with some wood infuller. Then here is the entire design before we start sanding. While the wood infuller is drying up, I will start painting the doors using some whitewash for one of the small ones, then pink for the big one. To attach on the wall, I will be creating four holes, two on top and two at the bottom to help me when it's time to fix on the wall. Then using my router with my chamfer bit, just before sanding, I'm gonna be removing a little bit on the edge. Then using my 120 grit sandpaper, I'm gonna be sanding the entire design. For this type of design, and as we were using some very strong wood, it's very important to sand as much as possible. Then I will start painting the hall with some whitewash to move after that with some normal water paint. Of course in white to match with the wall. Then two sections in pink to match 
with her desire. And as you may know, I will need to place the design on the ground to keep on working. And also for later on, I've decided here to place some pads at the bottom. Then when the door is all dry, it's time for me to create the placement for the inches. Here I'm going to be using some normal inches that you can find at your local home store. But those ones to properly close the doors need to be placed at 2.5 cm from the edge. To properly place them, I am first taking the mark, then pre-drilling to add each screw. And as I was telling you at the beginning, this video is sponsored by What About DIY. You remember, you know, before in the old days, you needed to have like a stud finder making a lot of noise toot, 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 to find what is behind the wall. But now everything is getting much, much more easier with your telephone and a device. You connect them together, and here you are. You can scan your wall, see what's behind it. And I have this device since almost six months actually and I've been using it every week it's very nice in my work even for some friends borrowing for some friends to check what is behind their wall it's very easy to use so a lot of you have been asking me questions because of the last video questions about it so I'm gonna be showing you a little bit what's inside of it wait so basically it's not very big, it's, it's something that you can bring in your bag. You can also uh, attach it to your, yeah, to your jacket, to your pant. And I'm going to be showing you what's inside of it. Alright, let's take a look. So here is the pocket you will receive when they are sending your Wallabo DIY. But note that it will be included into a box. Looking exactly like the one I'm showing you on the screen. This is actually the scanner that you will need to connect to your phone. This side here will be the one placed on the wall and the other one, the one where you will need to attach your telephone. They will be also providing some double-sided patch in order to help you to attach your telephone to it. And I will advise you to be very careful when opening it because it's very sticky. If I remember well, you will find a minimum of three pads in your box. And they are also providing the connecting cables. Below all this, you will find the instruction book. This book is basically explaining all the different ways that you can start using the device. And also providing their support details for questions. Alright, time to have some fun and test it. Here, when it's connected, it's supposed to give you an image, looking exactly like this one, of what's behind your wall. As I have here a concrete wall, I will be first using the image mode, which will give me a very nice picture of what's behind the wall, then the expert mode, which is looking a little bit more like a heat map. You do have a third mode called the pan mode, but when dealing with a concrete wall, it's better to use the image and the expert mode. Alright, now that we know what's behind the wall, it's time to fix the design. Remember at the beginning, I've told you that I've created two holes in order to help me fix the design to the wall. So now, attaching one at the bottom and one on the top, I will be using those two pieces of wood that I've made. First, leveling everything. Taking the marks. Then screwing to the wall. Et voilà, here I am with my little princess, and let's see how she reacts. She wasn't really expecting that, so I was really happy to see how glad she was with her desk and all the space she could save at the same time. And now it's big hug time! 
So here is the unique and beautiful design I've made for my little princess. And I received some questions from the preview video. From people asking me how can I block the door. Just to show you this is exactly why I've placed the handle at this position. Because when converting it into a table, it's also acting as a block as you can see here. And it's very steady. And remember that we are a community. You can share everything, your questions. Now Christmas time is coming. The most beautiful time of the year, right? <laughs> so let's see what you are making at home. Share some ideas with us. You have a lot of, oh no, here actually, a lot of members sharing beautiful ideas with us. Check them out because what they are doing is just amazing. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up and share the video because this is exactly what helping us to make even more projects for you every week. Mr. ATC, for another idea of housing, and I will see you next time.